Welcome back to Ryan Runs. It's been a few actually since I've done kind of a normal one of these Ryan Runs episodes. And I think it's because there's no such thing as kind of a normal one of these Ryan Runs episodes. I know at some point, because this was, this was like the thing I thought everything was going to be. I think when I first started it and also thought it had to be mostly about video games. So as, as stuff, and I've said this before as well, as stuff has kind of uh, been broken out into its own categories and shows, this has seen a little less attention, but I think has still found some focus, even if indirectly, and it's kind of anything that doesn't fit in those other videos. I'll put in here, but also to talk about a little bit, you know, what's going on around the office, you could say. But that also means this is where I can experiment and maybe try something new here and there. But not today, because we, we've got some things to take care of, you know. It's been a while since I've done any shout outs. And if anything changes about this particular series here, some things that will never change are the shout outs. This is gonna be where I hopefully give people their due because let me tell you, we've got a lineup today. Uh, let me tell you about Jonathan Blade. And I'm, I'm looking at my notes, it's not that I don't remember who they are. In fact, you'll see that I, I know all of these people quite well, but I just wanna make sure I remember what I wanna say about them. For instance, Jonathan Blade is a self-described timeless appreciator of media with vaguely old tastes. And let me tell you around here, if there's anything we've got in spades, it's vaguely old tastes. So welcome Jonathan Blade. He's, he's an old friend too. We've, I, I joke around a lot. It's, it's the same old story. You know, you meet somebody on Twitter, they're nice to you and you become friends, right? Happens to us all. So that happened probably years ago at this point, right? But uh, I've actually guested on his podcast not too long ago. It, we, in fact, you guessed it, talked about the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie from 1989. Had a ton of fun. In fact, I will link his entire show below because it is well worth a listen. He's done more than a few episodes that have stuck with me over time. I haven't listened to the most recent one because I haven't watched Godzilla Minus One yet. So I, I, I mean watch the thing and then I listen to the thing. But the episode before that where he goes into uh, RCS and what Apple's adoption means and all that stuff was perfectly informative, especially for somebody like me who pretends to know techie things and then is schooled by someone like Jonathan Blade. So super informative, useful show. Uh, the other episodes I'd call out as still kind of ringing around in my head. There's a Superman episode that he did that actually got me to go back and uh, read my Supreme comics that I bought in the 90s. And I don't know if I ever cracked them. So that was an interesting exercise. But the, the episode is, is super interesting when it comes to kind of the myth of Superman, let's say. And I don't mean that in that like he doesn't exist, although he doesn't exist, but in the archetypal character sense of the word. So uh, he has another episode called I Don't Believe in Racism that still, again, has stuck with me ever since. So lots of good stuff, well worth a listen. Thank you, Jonathan Blade, and welcome to the family. I mean, <laughs> you, you feel like you've been here for a bit, and certainly uh, around the block when it comes to uh, being a patron. So double thanks. Uh, next up, Karina appears to be the name that they gave me. Uh, although from what I understand, her name was supposed to be Katrina, quite possibly at some point, or maybe Katarina. I don't know if I remember that story, but I can tell you what I wanted her name to be because I have a distinct memory of myself standing up in the back seat of the car, and this is how you can tell it was the 80s. Actually, I actually don't know if I was standing on the back seat or, you know, it, 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 I wasn't sitting down, let's put it that way. I don't know, just up and around walking in the car. That's all I remember. And telling mom and dad that if it was a boy, they needed to name it Peter Pan. And I don't remember ever liking Peter Pan. <laughs> so, 
no idea why I was I was so stuck on that, but uh, the the baby w was born Karina and and is my sister. So I promise I did not force her to sign up for this. Uh, in, in, you know, any more than my stuff is just so good. How could you not? But uh, she she of her own free will and volition has become a patron, and I appreciate it so much. It means no less. Obviously, coming from from somebody I know, but I, I promise I'll pay you back. Uh, <laughs> and honestly, I should be paying her for the hell I put her through growing up. Can we actually go to a clip? He's in middle school, and I'm in, in kindergarten. And you're in kindergarten. That's right. And middle this is usually what Karina and Ryan are doing to each other. Now. <laughs> Four and back. Again, forward. So yes, still capturing a lot of VHS tapes over here. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Karina, and probably Alan too. Next up is another heavy hitter. I'm telling you, I, I probably should have given each one of you your own episodes, but Sliptide. Thank you. Sliptide is one of the most musically talented people I have ever met. And I mean that creatively and technically, he has been kind enough to answer all of my like computer music questions when I was trying to, to hook up that drum set in the back behind me. I don't know why I need to move. You see it every day on the daily drum. But when I was trying to get that going through the computer and looking at the lowest impact way to do that, he was on it. You know, he gave me like seven uh, suggestions before I, I was done typing the, the message it seemed like. so. He, he is very talented as far as that goes. And if you don't believe me, go check out his website at sliptide.com. He is also a YouTube creator. So I will, I will link his channel down below. Although I'm not as, as diligent with my subscriptions feed. I, I don't check out the new videos there often unless it really shoves it in my face. I'm hoping that I haven't missed some, some January episodes this time around, but in either event, it's all on his website. I was listening to Ephemeral Lateral the entire time I was typing out this episode. It's all just very good stuff. Please go check it out. And, and he and his family have been nothing but kind since the very second we have met. So another strong and huge recommendation as far as the creative goes, but also shout out and thank you as far as the uh, patronage goes. So. I, I'm not going to do any of you justice. I, I feel like I'm just so thankful for you regardless. So please uh, become a patron. And, and, and this could be you. I could be tripping over my words for you. In fact, I'm looking forward to... I, I have had a previous relationship, I think, with every one of my patrons so far. And not that that lessens anything. Uh, but I'm looking forward to what I do when I have no idea what you are. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm going to plug the heck out of you, but the, the, out of your website or, or whatever, but I, I can't wait. So please become a, a part of that crew. Um, next up, whatever this show does become, and again, it's always going to have shout outs, but it's also always going to have uh, whatever is on the wall. And uh, as long as I have wall to give, I'm going to tell you about it. And this week, it's a, it's that little tiny thing that's been up on the wall for months now already. But And I'll put a picture of it down in the corner, a nice high-quality scan for you so you can see it up close. It is a hand-drawn picture of my kiddos. So I got that for Father's Day not too long ago, so maybe like five years instead of 10 or 20, like everything else seems to be now. Uh, but it's done by a, another family friend. Uh, and if you want one of your own, you too can go to Kira Kira Design Shop on Etsy. I will link it below as well. And like I said, she's a family friend, obviously very talented. You can see by that picture, but also since we know her, I can vouch for her entirely. Uh, lastly, I'm, I'm gonna show you something. Actually, I wanna show you two things, right? One of them, the very first, and this isn't the first time I've showed it to you, and it won't be the last. I want to show to you how sometimes painfully dedicated I can be to the bit. And with that, 
I'm going to show you a guitar. Well, I know I started doing guitars of the week, and um, I only have two left, so come on, stick with me. This is also the very best. You can tell by the case I bought uh, 20 years after the fact, maybe, uh, because it does actually have a story to it. Maybe I'll tell it to you before I open it. So when we were newly married, Candy and I, I'm trying to keep it close to the mic here too. I apologize if it's going to be all over the place, but I, maybe my first birthday, second of us knowing each other, being married, she got me a guitar on eBay. And this was probably back when I played more often, which I don't play the guitar. That's, that's the first thing to remember. She got a guitar for me and it was unlike anything I had had before. It was a vintage guitar with F holes and looked gorgeous and was something I had never considered. You know, my guitars were that one on the wall that we talked about last time, you know, with all the, the stickers on it, you know, anything that looked like uh, it cost at most 179 bucks, I think is what that guitar cost. But it had stickers all over it and was just, you know, to, to get me from A to B, but also B was still not knowing how to play the guitar beyond some power chords. So uh, that a guitar could look gorgeous and maybe sound <laughs> different than, than a, than a, you know, wannabe Fender was, was new to me. So that was a beautiful present. It was a picture of the guitar because the uh, auction hadn't finished. And uh, by time it did finish, we had lost. So I didn't get that guitar. <laughs> but as kind of a make good, which this is what you do when you're young and married and don't have kids. It's like, oh, you're going to buy me this expensive thing? Well, let's still go out and buy the expensive thing. It's not like, I feel like nowadays if that were to happen, I'd just be like, well, I guess we just saved some money and, and count it as even. But uh, we went to Guitar Center and came back with this sucker, which looked uh, pretty similar to the one we were looking at. And okay, I'm just going to cut while I actually open the stupid thing. This is an, an Epiphone Alley Cat, which again, more guitar than I ever deserved or needed. Uh, sounds beautiful, is broken apparently. I bet I'm gonna find that inside the case somewhere, but <laughs> I haven't taken it out of the case for, for a few. So uh, enjoy it while you can, but it's, like I said, by far the most serious guitar that I own. In fact, I was able to find the catalog. And if you were looking to buy one back in 2003, which could have been very close to when I bought this thing, you would have seen that if you're looking for a guitar that's as unique as you are, check out the Alley Cat. Like the Flame Cat, it features the Cat Series small, semi-hollow body design, but this guitar features a tune-o-matic bridge, stop bar tailpiece, and a combination of a 57 classic humbucker in the bridge position and a New York mini humbucker in the neck position. The result is a guitar with great sustain, comfort, and sound. Available in HS, TB, and VS. I think I might have the TB. I, I believe this is the Tobacco Sunburst, which the one I see most often is the one that's red, where the black is here, and I guess brown is here on mine. So I'm glad I got the one I did. Obviously, the, I think this is by far the, the most gorgeous of the colorways that they had. Um, but I guess that's that guitar, and that's the story behind that guitar. And since it is the nicest guitar I own, I'm going to cut while I put it back in the case. So that's the guitar for this week. Again, I don't play, but when I do not play, that one sounds the best by far. So uh, come back next week for, like I said, I'm pretty sure the very last guitar and also not next week. I don't think one of these will probably happen for a few weeks at least. I desperately, in fact, in way of, of website updates, here you go. I desperately want to not only finish, but at least do the next episode of Chasers. So that's really on my plate. I, <laughs> this is the kind of person I am, have had all of the tabs up on my computer in their own group and not obviously front and center, but all of those tabs that I went into to research 
four of those videos still up the entire time. So I'm looking forward to closing those tabs and closing out that series. So if I do manage to make that happen, it will be about, I'm pretty sure, X-Men Series 2 and Marvel Universe Series 4, which is where the story is going to get a little bit more interesting and contemporary because I started recollecting those. That's kind of what literally drove the creation of that series is because at the moment I was trying to collect comic book cards and found the best way to do that was to collect the ones I was collecting back in the 90s. So that'll get uh, a little bit more interesting and hopefully that'll get made. So come back next time for that, hopefully next week for that. Uh, otherwise, I have my eye on the series I do where I'm mostly unboxing stuff, the Product Things playlist, as it's called. And why I say I have my eye on it is because it continues to be the series I've given the least amount of attention to, but the one that pulls in the most views regularly. The highest viewed video on my channel is still that monitor arm video. So I've been upfront about why I resist some of that is because those... Number one, there's a million of them, but if, if you wanted an exhaustive tech video, it's already out there, and those are just so intensive. I don't know, maybe somebody sends me something someday and that makes it more fun, or again, depending on the thing, maybe I wanna go into it, but for now, I haven't come across anything like that. So I have my eye on that series both to spruce it up, you know, maybe give it its own title and its own design. It's literally like, most bottom of the barrel logo and text I could think of at the time, but also because I think the tack I'm going to take with those videos is I'm just going to double down on the whole personal nature of this entire channel. And I will go into more detail, but it'll be more detail about why I bought the thing, my own use case scenario, what I'm going to do with it. So there, there will be a little bit more to them maybe than an unboxing, but Again, not so much that you're not gonna go want to find something that tells you maybe the specifics about the thing, but there is some amount of research that goes into obviously buying those things. So I will have something to talk about. It's just not gonna be as exhaustive as the videos I watched to probably buy the thing. So come back for that, any of that. And thank you as always, thank you again to the patrons. Thank you to the ones that have been here for months, even though it was heavy on the newbies up front. Uh, thank you, Brandon, Adam, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, Greg, Kim, um, Adam again, Brandon again. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time.